Hey photographers, you are watching my honest, detailed, and unsponsored review of this Fujifilm X-E4 digital camera. You will see everything you need to know to make a decision about this camera for creating images, as well as the answers to many of the questions you asked in the comments to my loves and hates video. Uh, the X-E4 is small, lightweight, easy to use with excellent auto features, so you can concentrate on composition and timing while it looks after focus, exposure, and color. Now, of course, when you want to take control, it also has all of the manual controls and capabilities to satisfy the most demanding creator. <laughs> Round that out with some nice tricks like Fujifilm's color profiles, simulating their classic film styles, and features like panorama, time-lapse, focus stacking, and multi-exposure. Uh, there is a navigation menu to find specific topics in this video, so you can skip to the part that interests you. Uh, spoiler alert! This video is only about stills. And many viewers use my videos as tutorials. So it is organized in a task-oriented way, taking you through the features as you would use them while making photos instead of plodding through the menus. The X-E4 has an APS-C size 26 megapixel X-Trans sensor, providing excellent detail for large size prints or for any online purpose. And there are lots of X-mount lenses in Fujifilm selection. In this review, I'm using the 27 millimeter prime, the 10 to 24 millimeter wide angle zoom, the 16 to 80 standard zoom, and the 70 to 300 long zoom. They'll star in my next video. From the front, particularly with this 27 millimeter prime, it's a very minimal classic camera design. And from the back, with the offset viewfinder, it's reminiscent of a rangefinder camera. The electronic viewfinder is a fairly routine 2.4 M.0 OLED. Now, I prefer to shoot without my glasses. The diopter can be adjusted to my prescription. And for those who shoot with glasses, the iCap is small and friendly, but depending on your prescription, you may not see the whole image. The X-E4 does not have a view mode button to switch between viewfinder and LCD, but it is a custom button option. The 1.6 M.0 LCD swivels up for waist level shooting and then all the way up to face forward and nearly 90 degrees down. And there are seven keys all on the right side. Uh, three can be customized from an eight page selection of functions. There are three dials, shutter duration, exposure compensation, and a front-facing command dial with multiple functions. And you asked about flash. Well, there's a flash shoe, but no onboard or included flash. The camera has one door on the bottom for the battery and the SD card. SD, XC, UHS-1 type are supported. The battery compartment is a little too close to the tripod socket, so on a tripod, you'll have to remove the release plate to change batteries or remove the card. And why doesn't the door snap closed? After formatting the card, you'll want to change some of the menu defaults. In screen setup, you might like to turn on image disp, which displays the photo after you take it. And there are lots of screen display options, Personally, I turn the histogram and highlight alert on and turn off some of the items that I don't need cluttering my screen. Or press the disp key, which displays a clean image or a status screen. Now I set image quality to F plus raw. I'll show you why that's useful later. And there are three options for compressing raw files. There are three sizes, each with three aspect ratios. And now, exposure, focus, and color profile. Set the dial to P to let the XE4 set the exposure for the scene. P, for program mode, displays bottom left. Make adjustments using the right side exposure compensation dial. The display is screen left three up or down. If that's not enough, spin the dial to C 
and now the range is 5 up and down. Press the front dial until the front dial icon appears above the exposure display. First, let's focus this scene. For images that include people, turn face and eye detection on. Now, there are options to do face only or to select a specific eye. Anne will help me demonstrate. Sometimes a soft press of the shutter is needed. And as soon as Anne's eye is identified, the auto exposure adjusts to expose the face properly. One of the features of face eye detect is that it's also an exposure meter mode. Face Eye Detect does a reasonable job of staying with Anne as she moves and turns, although a soft press is needed to achieve focus. It's very good, but it's not flawless. Otherwise, the joystick activates focus point selection. Use the front dial to set the area wide, three zones, six single point sizes, and this is the 117 point grid. The menu can increase the grid to 425 points, which covers the same area, but with more selection points. The widest tulips are triggering the highlight alert. By default, the focus point and exposure meter point are interlocked. Turn off face detect and select and change photometry to spot to set exposure to the selected tulip. Change the focus point and expose your changes too. With single mode, single point, focus is fast. This is the 60 to 80 millimeter lens. Whether your point is in the center or at the edges, even when light levels are low. To change focus modes, use the Q menu, bottom row. Of course, this can be customized. There are options to have from 4 to 16 selections. Now, I'm exchanging focus with ISO. Then, turn the front dial to change to continuous focus. Focus mode is also available on the focus menu, or if this is one of your most used settings, assign it to the Exposure Focus Lock key. Then press the key and the menu appears. In Continuous, Wide becomes Tracking, with a movable point to select the subject to track. Press the shutter release to start tracking. To combine tracking with burst mode, press the drive key and select the frame rate from the menu. More detail on that later. The third focus option is manual, using the focus ring on the lens. Note that in manual, spot isn't interlocked and face detect turns off. The menu provides four manual focus assists. Standard is a zoomed in view. Focus Peaking provides a highlight around focused edges. Four colors, two response levels. Focus Check punches in when the lens ring is turned in manual mode. This combines nicely with Peaking for a dual assist. The on-screen distance guide is helpful, particularly as the blue bar around the focus distance point indicates the depth of field. While reviewing an image, Turn the front dial to zoom and confirm focus. Incidentally, use the joystick to review the settings. Now color. Use the Q menu to select one of the Fujifilm simulations. Again, this can be repositioned or assigned to one of the custom keys for faster access. From the Q menu, you get a background indication of the effect. Although it's a little more awkward, the image menu is a better preview. There are 12 selections, or 18 if you add the three filter variations for Acros and Monochrome. Each was designed with a specific type of image in mind, but... For stills, Auto White Balance, again found on the Q menu but also customizable, allows quick selection of the preset. Again, 
the menu or a custom key assignment provides a better preview and more control. If you want to set the K value or make adjustments to the white balance shift. Uh, you'll probably use auto, which has an optional white priority or ambience priority to preserve the slightly amber tone of low light incandescence. Fine tune using the white balance shift settings. Now there's no shift in black and white. The monochrome color adjustment provides that capability if you want a tint other than sepia. Color Chrome adds more tonal definition to saturated dark colors. Chrome FX Blue enhances sky. I find both provide good enhancement. That is a lot to set and manage, particularly if you're trying to judge the effect on the small monitor. If you are shooting RAW, as I suggested earlier, the playback mode has a RAW conversion. All of these settings can be added later. Film simulation, white balance, but not shift, mono color, and the chrome effects. This is the chance to try and compare when you get home, and you can create as many copies with as many different settings as you like. The drive menu has options to vary the white balance. Here, three images are saved with higher and lower color temperatures. Uh, you asked if the XE4 could bracket three film simulations. Yes, select the ones you want from the menu. With a single starter press, three images are saved, so you can choose the best later. We've left exposure on auto. Let's go back and take control. In program mode, the XE4 offers a very interesting shift function. Press the front dial until SS shutter duration has the control dial. Use the front dial to adjust the shutter duration while the aperture changes automatically. Or press the front dial to highlight F and now control switches to aperture. Switching the mode dial, now it's the shutter duration dial to A, leaves the camera in program mode. Icon lower left. Unless the lens's aperture ring is moved from the auto position, at which point the camera is in aperture priority set with the ring. The difference now is that all aperture settings are available. In P, only settings that result in a properly exposed image are possible. Return the ring to A and turn the shutter duration dial to a specific setting, putting the camera into shutter priority mode. Adjust the aperture again. Now it's full manual, but not really, as Auto ISO is still on. Press the unlabeled top right button to access the ISO menu. The whole ISO range from 160 to 12,800 can be set. Two overextended high ranges go up to 51,200. Three low extensions down to 80. Try the high settings and determine your tolerance so you know how much you find acceptable all the way up to 12,800 and then extend it up to 51,200. Uh, use that to set your maximum sensitivity. There are three auto variations to use different settings for different situations. Yes, ISO can be adjusted with the command dial. Press the ISO key first, then navigate right to make changes. Now that the image is properly exposed, the dynamic range from bright to dark may leave specific areas of the image over or underexposed. The menu's interactive tone control can either flatten the curve to reduce the contrast or, turn the other way, increase the contrast. You also asked about a smooth skin setting the XE4 doesn't have that, but you may be able to accomplish the same effect with sharpness and clarity settings. And there are also three dynamic range setting options. I don't find these very effective, so I use D-Range Priority. Although these override tone curves and dynamic range, this provides better results. To summarize with samples, no adjustment, a flat tone curve, a steep tone curve, 
400% dynamic range, strong derange priority. Uh, these are all tools for your artistic toolbox. Note that 400% dynamic range and strong D range priority require a minimum ISO of 640. Good information for setting your auto ISO. And that is a lot of settings to manage, particularly as one combination doesn't really fit all scenarios. A group of settings can be saved as a custom setting. There's room for seven. And then configure the settings for this custom set. With Auto Update enabled, changes you make while you're in a custom mode are saved when you change to another mode. Uh, saved settings are selected from the Q menu. This can also be assigned to a custom key. That brings up an interactive menu previewing the setting. Now, in the Love Hate video comments, Many asked about these parameters, in particularly the white balance shift. Yes, that setting is saved with the custom setting. So, film simulation, white balance are saved along with the white balance shift. Uh, you cannot save drive modes like burst in custom setting, but you can save focus modes. Custom settings don't save the current exposure mode, aperture, or shutter settings. Self-timer, yes. Interval timer, no. Essentially, if you can't find it on the custom list and the Q menu, it won't be saved. Each custom setting has an individual erase. The stills reset and the setup reset don't change the custom settings. For continuous shooting, when the shutter is set to mechanical, only 8 frames per second are available. Uh, with that setting, you'll never run into a buffer limit. The XE4 just keeps on going. I quit after a minute. Combined with continuous focus tracking, I captured a sequence of 46 images as the train changes sides, gets to the very edge of the frame, and then approaches to the lens's closest focus distance. The XE4 doesn't miss a frame. That's a more than competitive result. Switch to the electronic shutter, which decreases the minimum shutter duration from 1 over 4,000 to 1 over 32,000, and record 26 megapixel images up to 20 frames per second, or cropped 13 megapixel up to 30. However, these are mostly fiction, as the buffer fills within a second or so. After that, burst continues at 10 or 11 frames, which is still impressive. With the electronic shutter, the pre-shot feature is available. A soft press the shutter, and the camera starts to buffer frames, saving about the last 10 before you fully press, and then continuing. Switching back to mechanical shutter, Sports Finder takes crop 13 megapixel images. The image size icon turns yellow to alert. The screen displays the area beyond the frame to anticipate action but only captures the image in the frame. Both seem like good ideas, but are limited in practice. The Drive menu has brackets for ISO, Exposure, Dynamic Range, and Focus. Focus Bracket, configured on the menu with either Auto or Manual, takes multiple images of a static scene with small focus increments, either to make sure the focus is sharp on a macro shot or to create a focus stacked image. In manual, set the number of images and the increment. There's an HDR bracket, 200, 400, 800, and plus, an in-camera panorama with two sizes and four pan directions. Multi-exposure, with blend settings in the menu, and up to nine images. There's a small set of advanced filters. Um, these interesting tools have lots of inspiration and exploration potential. The menu has other drive modes like interval timer, which can be set to an infinite number of images, but can't turn them into a video. One nice feature here, it puts the camera to sleep between images. And the self-timer. I'm not sure why the 2 and 10 second timer aren't on the drive menu, but if they were, you would not be able to combine it with 
burst mode, and take multiple images after the delay. The XE4 also works as a webcam using Fujifilm's free webcam app. Its shortcoming is that the connection provides only video, not audio. The Fujifilm Camera Remote app, while limited, can be useful mainly to transfer images to your phone and post on social media. Its, its best trick is the ability to update the camera's firmware without requiring a computer. Would everyone else please do this too? I do continue to find the menu frustrating. It is well organized, although some of the high-level options now run to three screens. That's a lot when scrolling if you're changing custom settings. And then it returns to the first tab, the first line, particularly when accessing setup options is a major frustration. My menu helps, but it doesn't, as setup screens aren't available and that always opens my menu. One recommendation, don't use your left hand, particularly for the drive mode key, as you approach the viewfinder senses and blocks the screen. Battery life is rated longer than average, and the camera can be powered from an external USB-C power delivery battery. The design does not include grips on the front or the back. Fujifilm sells optional accessories, adding a grip to the front and a thumb rest to the back. The grip also centers the tripod mount and raises the height of the camera. Otherwise, many lenses are lower than the body, which is not good with some tripod quick release plates. Now, I find the thumb rest just gets in the way, making the Q menu key harder to access. And after a few weeks of shooting, carrying the camera around on a strap, I don't feel that they're necessary. A few quibbles, but overall, I find this a very capable camera with a good set of features. Excellent focus, great color options, and oh yes, it records video. High quality, extensive feature set overheats quickly. I should do a video about that. If you enjoy my videos, it'd be great if you'd become a subscriber. Just click the button below. And as I said at the beginning, I am not sponsored, so I won't stop in the middle to read you an ad, nor do I allow YouTube to interrupt my videos with mid-roll ads. That does have a financial impact, so I'm very grateful to those of you who've decided to support this channel by becoming a member. Membership perks include a private email address where members are whitelisted so you can correspond directly with me. Uh, use the join button below. But subscribers need not worry. No content will be behind a paywall. Please choose the option that suits your needs. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Music